a special role on the team. Tell your neighbor, you've got a special role. I learned in playing football that whole statement of the strength of the pack is in the wolf, but the strength of the wolf is in the pack. In terms of talent uh, and conditioning and preparation on, that, on those teams that I was on playing football, I, I could tell you that when it came down to talent and preparation, nobody wanted to be the weakest link. What made the team strong was not the best players, but the seemingly weakest players. It was when the weakest players pushed harder. It's when the weakest players stayed after practice. It's when those who maybe didn't have as much talent, but how many have heard that saying, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard? I learned that in football. I learned that when we are all strong, we can have the victory. When we would blow it in practice, we would get punished. And they would make us run and run and run and run. If we, if we didn't get the snap count correct, say, take off. That was the word, take off. So you'd have to run a whole entire lap around the field just because you missed the hike. Can I hear an amen? Because timing was everything. I learned a lot in football. And I also learned that uh, the conditioning was fierce. We were constantly conditioning because... Football games are not one in the first quarter. They're one in the fourth quarter. Whenever the fourth quarter would come around, they say fourth quarter. That's when all your conditioning comes in. Because if the other team didn't condition, they'd lose the game. And I really believe this message is going to speak to some of us here today. Because when I think about the season that we are in, we have been in a season of conditioning. I remember when I got to high school the wrestling coach was trying to recruit me. And I was pretty good in football. I was in good shape at that time. And the wrestling coach came, hey, Valdez, you got to be a wrestler, man. There was this unspoken competition, Pastor Algie might remember, between wrestlers and football players. Who was the toughest? Who was the strongest? Who was in the best shape? So finally, I think it was right around my sophomore year, I said, you know what, man, I'm going to try for wrestling. Man, I was tough. I could fight. I knew what was up. So I remember around the second or third practice, everything was going smooth. But what I came to found out, find out is that conditioning for football was totally different than conditioning for wrestling. And when I found out on that third practice, and I can tell you right now, man, I have never quit a thing in my life. Well, I quit high school, but I never quit anything else. <laughs> I never quit a sport in my life. When it came to sports, I never quit. I never quit. I, I, I finished to the end, no matter how bad the team, no matter how bad a season I had, I always finished. And I never quit a thing in my life. But on that third practice, man, they made us do some stuff that I had never even heard of. I remember we showed up to practice one day, and the coach says, all right, you guys ready to condition? We're going to another level today. I said, what is it? And they said, okay, everybody get your partner and carry them on your back. So I had to get a guy who was the same weight as me. They didn't give me a small guy. They said, you got to find the guy that's the same weight as you. And you got to carry him on your back. So I get this guy on my back. And they say, now what we want you to do is we want you to run up the stadium stairs. <laughs> See, I thought I was tough. But then I realized there was another level. I thought I was strong, but then I realized that there was another level of condition. I got this guy on my back, and I was about, you know, maybe 175 pounds at that time, and I'm trying to go up, and I got to tell you, man, my legs were, <laughs> I thought they were going to collapse. I never quit anything in my life, but I could tell you I didn't make it through that wrestling season. In fact, I didn't even show up to the next practice. The Bible's clear, brothers and sisters, that as Christians, we're called to wrestle. The question becomes, if we've, for many of us, if we've been given the victory and we have the promises of God in our life, Pastor, why do we have to wrestle? Why do we have to get engaged in, in battle? Well, I want you to know that we do get engaged in battle and we get engaged in spiritual warfare because we know that there's spoils to be taken. As I said in the beginning of this pandemic, that we're in a fight for the spoils of war. There are many people here this morning, you've been made, made rich through warfare. 
For every battle you've won, there have been external rewards. Some of you have been blessed financially. Others have been blessed, you know, in, in many different areas that you can see with your eye. But I came to tell you there are things in your life that cannot be seen with the eye because they are not external rewards, but they are internal rewards. One of the greatest blessings of wrestling and do, doing spiritual warfare is not what you gain on the outside, but it's what you gain on the inner man. Uh, this is a message this morning that is designed to strengthen the inner man. This is a message this morning that is designed to strengthen the inner woman. Because many of you are going through quiet battles in your life. Quiet warfare. You may put a smile on the outside, but you got something going on on the inside. But I came to tell you this morning that through wrestling, God strengthens and prepares the innermost parts of the children that he loves. See, wrestling is interesting because wrestling is singular combat. When an army goes to war, soldiers don't always have to fight. There are times of fierce battle and times of rest. There are times when one regiment of the army is on the front lines. And while that regiment is on the front lines, the other part of the army is back at camp. They're resting, they're refueling, they're bandaging their wounds. When you fight in a war and the enemy shoots an arrow at you from a distance, you can see the arrow coming and you can dodge it and you can move it. But when you get involved in wrestling, you are involved in hand-to-hand -hand combat. There is no time for rest. There is no time to take a break. There is no time to sit back and just drink, you know, some hot tea or some Kool-Aid. How many know you got to be ready when you wrestle? You got to be ready. Now I understand why the conditioning was so fierce. Because when the enemy grabs hold of you, you can either resist like a man or surrender to his power. How many people have we lost in this season because instead of strengthening themselves and being prepared, they've surrendered to the power of the enemy? See, through wrestling, I want you to know, through hand-to-hand -hand combat, you say, what's the enemy after? Be sure the enemy's after your destiny. See, the enemy wants to wrestle with you and engage you in spiritual warfare so that he can cancel the promises of God and dislodge you from his plan. See, he grabs hold of you. But brothers and sisters, I want you to know that it's through wrestling that even though the enemy tries to target your personal destiny, God uses spiritual combat to prepare us. I want you to hear this statement very, very clearly this morning. Brothers and sisters, as children of God, we don't have problems. We only have predestined purposes. You don't have a problem this morning. You just have a purpose. You don't have a challenge this morning. You just simply have a doorway to what God desires to do in your life next. Now, whether we like it or not this morning, every one of us has to get into that ring of spiritual warfare. What happens when you get in the ring of spiritual warfare? How can you diagnose whether you're in the ring of warfare if, or if you're wrestling? How can you tell this morning? I can tell you the reason you can tell you're wrestling is because Satan bends his fury against you personally. He bends his fury against you personally. And when he bends his fury against you, he hates you. He hates you. See, see, the devil hates you. That's why you shouldn't be friends with him. He's not a real friend. He hates you. And not only does he hate you, he accuses you. The Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. He accuses you. And not only does he accuse you, but he tempts you. You say, how, am I know I'm, how do I know I'm wrestling this morning, Pastor? Are you being tempted? Are you being tempted? Because we know the Lord doesn't tempt. He tests, but he doesn't tempt. Are you being tempted? Are you being accused this morning? Is the devil just attacking you through text message, attacking you through Facebook? Come on, somebody. Don't look at me all religious this morning. I know there's people that are wrestling this morning. But understand the fierce hate and jealousy that he has for you. You've got to remember that he was once the chief worshiper. He was Lucifer, the morning star. He was the chief worshiper. He controlled all the worship in heaven, but then he got proud. 
And because of pride, he was taken out of heaven and he took a third of the angels with them and they became demon, demonic spirits. But guess who the worshipers now? They aren't just the angels of heaven. It's the people of God who worship. Are you a worshiper this morning? Are you someone that has God number one within your life? Well, if you are a worshiper this morning, you can be sure that the devil hates you and he can't stand when you worship. He can't stand when you praise. He can't stand when you lift up the name of Jesus. Can you take a moment and just lift up and get the devil mad? Just go ahead and get him real jealous right now. So he bends his fury towards you. He wants to try to take you out of God's promises. But here's the good news, that even though Satan hates you, the Lord loves you. He loves you with a father's love. His greatest affection is for his children that he's given birth through to his son, Jesus Christ. He not only loves you, but while Satan accuses you, do you know God pardons you? Do you know that he pardons you? Do you know that there's nothing too hard for God to forgive? Right when you think you're out of it, it's the Lord's love that brings you right back into it. Can I hear an amen? He loves you. He pardons you. There are people here that know what it is to be pardoned by the Lord. And not only does he pardon you, but you know what he does? He takes care of you. Watch this. With real power. Say real power. See, let me tell you, we all, we all tried to change our lives through substance, whether it was money, relationships, sex, drugs, alcohol, rock and roll. Come on, somebody. But do you know that the Lord is real power? How many believe in the real power of the Holy Spirit? And his power is available to you. His power lives inside of you. He loves you. He takes care of you. He's given you real power. Did you know God's weakest ability is much stronger than any weapon that the enemy can throw at you? When we say that there's no weapon formed against us shall prosper, do you know that there's more power in God's pinky than all the powers of hell? God has given you the power to overcome every spiritual attack. Oh, I came to preach this morning. He's giving you the power to overcome every lie, every false accusation. He's got more power in his pinky than the devil has all in the kingdom of hell. So greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Somebody say real power. Put your hand in your heart and say, I got real power. See, you say, well, if I got real power, then why have, do I have to wrestle, Pastor? Why? Let me tell you, God will only allow what will benefit you. God never allows anything in your life that will take you out of his plan. He only allows, even in spiritual warfare, even in spiritual battle, he allows it because he knows it will benefit you. That should encourage you. Because there's some of you in this pandemic, you've been in a battle, haven't you? You've, oh, Lord, you've been in a battle, haven't you? There's been times you said, God, are you even there? But you know, the Lord is saying, yes, I'm there. I'm just getting you ready because I've got even greater things in store for you. He's only going to allow what benefits you. You see, spiritual warfare could be raging your life. But you know what wrestling does? I feel the Lord. You know what wrestling does, brothers? It's God bringing out the best in you. That's all that's happening. No matter how discouraged you might be, your daddy is just bringing out the best in you. There's greatness in you. There's potential in you. There's power in you. Oh, man, I can't wait to see the treasures that are unlocked from your life when you let wrestling bring the best out in you. There are three things about wrestling, and then I'll let you go. You with me so far? Write this down. Number one, wrestling sharpens us for combat. See, the devil is defeated. But God is bringing out the best in you. The devil has no victory. But there are things that the Lord wants to unlock in your life. See, our warfare is not natural. We know it's spiritual. 
Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. But the purpose of spiritual battle, like I said, is to strengthen the inner man. It's to strengthen the inner woman. You say, oh, pastor, the church has been going through so much. It seems that nothing is happening in the house of the Lord. We can't have our events. We can't, you know, have these big crusades. And, but let me tell you, oh, a lot's happening. Oh, a lot's happening. You know what's happening is the people of God are getting stronger than ever. The people of God are growing more than ever. The people of God are maturing like never before. Give God a praise if you believe it. The people of God are growing. And the reason God wants to grow us on the inside is because many times we have outer strength. I look at some of you. You have outer strength. You're very strong physically. You're very strong in your appearance. You're very strong possibly even financially or in business or in the, in the things that you've achieved in life. But the question is, are you strong on the inside? Is your heart strong? Is your spirit strong? Are your convictions strong? You say, why do I have to wrestle? Because God's not doing an outer work, brothers and sisters. God is doing an inner work. He's doing an inner work. Why must I wrestle with this woman? Why must I wrestle with this man? Married people. Seems like we're always tussling or always going at it. Come on, somebody. She's sweet. I'm sour. I'm sweet. She's sour. Talk to me. I'm mustard. She's ketchup. We used to be peanut butter and jelly. Why must I wrestle? Because God is doing an inner work inside of you. Just lean over to your spouse and kiss him this morning. I want to tell you something this morning. Are you getting this message? I want to tell you that I've learned more from my enemies than I ever have from my friends. We pray our enemies out, but God just keeps them in. I've I've learned more from my enemies than I've ever learned from my friends. Opposition has a way of positioning us and preparing us. My enemies have taught me wisdom. My enemies have taught me forgiveness. Oh, Lord Jesus, my enemies have taught me patience and long suffering. (laughs) Come on, somebody. But you know, my my enemies have also taught me, they've taught me what human nature is. I've learned how to do ministry based on how my enemies have treated me. And how they, and that, you say, well, heavy, well, this is ministry, guys. We're involved in ministry here. A lot of times... Your enemies benefit you more than your friends. See, what's God doing, Pastor? Why am I having to wrestle? You know what's happening? Wrestling will make a man or a woman out of you. (laughs) That's what's happening. Oh, you don't like it now. You're like, Pastor, this is not the message I wanted this morning. But I got to tell you something. He's making a man out of you. Oh, I don't like it. Oh, he's making a woman of God out of you. If it hurts, and I don't like it, and I'm tired, but he's raising up some warriors at Victory Outreach San Diego. (laughs) Touch your neighbor and tell him I like you. I'll fight with you. I'll go to war with you because I see your trials, and I see your storms. And I see your battles. And I see that no matter what comes against you, you're still at your post. You're still worshiping God. You're still praying. You're still pressing in. You still show up to Bible study. You haven't given up in the bits of the storm. Come on, somebody. I like what God is doing in you. I like the miracle that's in motion in your life. He's making a man out of you. He's making a woman out of you this morning. I love it. I can't. I thank God. I thank God for it. So the first thing is it sharpens us. I feel like just parking here right now. I got a couple more points, but let me just park here. This is a good message. You know what the Lord does when he sharpens you in wrestling? I'm going to continue right here. In professional fighting, there are weight classes. Any boxing fans? 
I mean, you can't put Canelo in there with Mike Tyson. Tyson will put Canelo to sleep. So in boxing, you can only fight according to your weight class. Come on, somebody. So why does the Lord allow you to wrestle? Because the Lord is teaching you how to bring up your weight. Uh, come on, somebody. There are some of you that could have gotten knocked over by a little person in the past. But there are some of you that have learned how to kill some giants. Come on, somebody, because through wrestling, the Lord has raised up your weight class. The things that used to shake you in the past, they don't shake you anymore. The things that used to stretch you out in the past, they don't stretch. You just say, mm, praise the Lord. I'm at a different weight class. I'm not the man that I used to be. I'm not the woman that I used to be. Touch your neighbor, tell him, get up your weights. I'll tell you, man, if this pandemic hit our church 12 years ago, we'd be dead. We'd be dead because me and Georgina, we were at a different weight class. We were like straw weight, bantam weight. I remember one time we took the church, you know, the, the office told me I was going through a lot financially here in the church and had to get rid of my house, all kinds of stuff was going on. And then the home, they needed money. The pastor, we, there's no work and we need money. And, and me, you know, I'm a noob. I don't have any weight on me. But how many like, thank God you have a pastor. So I call the pastor and I go, Pastor, I can tell you, what's going on? I go, the home, you know, they, don't, they need some money. And they've gotten themselves in debt, and I don't want to close the home, and they, they're in a real pickle. And he says, well, how much do they need? They need about $6,000. And it was a long pause on the phone. <laughs> and I remember the conversation like it was yesterday. He says, you know what, Al? He goes, uh, let me s tell you this. If I give you that $6,000 to help the home, I'll always have to give you what you need. He says, you've got to learn how to believe God. Let's just say it wasn't what I wanted to hear. <laughs> you've got to learn to believe God. What he was telling me, Son, you got to get your weight up. And I could tell you when I hung up that phone, you know what happened to the home? We didn't close it. God provided. You know that in all these years, we've never had to shut our men's or our women's home down. Do you know that in all these years, we've never had to fire or furlough employees? You know that in all these years, we've never locked for any good thing. We've always had what we need. Do you know that even in the pandemic, the church is growing financially because we have learned how to wrestle and we have lifted up our, our weight class. I can tell you when we started the church, Georgina, we were bantam weights. But I believe that today, through our spiritual struggle and through wrestling, you're talking to some heavyweights in the house of the li How about you? Are there any heavyweights in the house of God? Woo. Now you like wrestling. Let me go just one more point. I got two, but let me just go. Give one more here. Wrestling shifts our life and shapes our identity. If, if you're curious about the second point, wrestling tests and reveals our allegiance and loyalty. I'll share that in the next service. But as they, we get ready to close, wrestling shifts our life and it shapes our identity. Shapes our identity. Rachel wanted a child, but she had to wrestle for that child. She was criticized and couldn't bring any honor to her home. She was in a struggle with her sister. Her sister looked down on her because she was a baby machine, just like some of you.
Somebody just look at your wife if she gets pregnant. Come on, somebody. <laughs> but she had to wrestle to give birth. And when she had her son, she named him Naphtali, meaning struggle. There's no breakthrough without a struggle. But the minute her son was born, watch this. Her whole identity was shifted. You know what wrestling does? It gives you confidence. When you're weak, you lack confidence. When you're unsure, you go into a room and stand in the corner. You're sheepish. You walk with your head down. You don't have the full boldness of the Holy Ghost. But let me tell you the gift of the Holy Spirit in your life, if you'll receive it today. The gift of the Holy Spirit in your life is the power God fills you so that you could be who you are, wherever you are. Let me be clear. The Holy Ghost has changed my identity. The Holy Spirit has changed your identity. That's why it doesn't matter who's in the White House. Because my identity was never in Donald Trump. It was never in Obama. It was never in Bush. My identity has been earned through wrestling and my identity is in Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit. So I could walk into any room. I could walk into a red room. I could walk into a blue room. I could walk into a purple room. It doesn't care what matter what season it is. I have paid a price for the spirit of revival in my life. And when I walk into that room, that room cannot stay the same because I've given birth to something. I've been in a wrestling match. I've been in spiritual. Hurting people aren't looking for a red church or a blue church. Hurting people are looking for a church that knows how to wrestle. Hurting people are looking for a church full of the Holy Ghost. Am I in the right church this morning? I want you to shout in this place. I want you to give Jesus all the praise in this. Are there any wrestlers in the house of the living God? Well, if there are, I can't wait to see what God is about to do in your life. I can't wait to see what God is about to do in your marriage. I can't wait to see what God... Come on and shout and praise Him. Come on and shout and pray. Come on and shout. There's some giants that are going down. There's some devils that are going down. There's some demons that are going under our feet because there are some wrestlers. There are some warriors. Oh my God, I'm preaching up here by myself. You're stronger than you've ever been. You're wiser than you've ever been. You look better than you've ever looked. You're in good shape this morning. Woo, come on, play with softly there. Look at three people, tell them you're in good shape this morning. Woo, you're not sick. You ain't got no COVID. Can I hear an amen? You're strong in mind. You're strong in heart. You're strong in spirit. So why don't you go ahead and give Jesus all the praise for that? Why don't you go ahead and get grateful this morning? You've been in a wrestling match, but you came out with the victory. You came out with the glory. You came out with the power. You came out with the anointing. Come on, somebody, give him praise and give him praise and give him praise. I came to stir someone up this morning. I came to fire someone up this morning. The best is yet to come. Come on and praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. You better praise him or else the rocks are going to cry out. I want to praise the Lord. I want to lift up his name. I want to shout. Look what the Lord said. Look what the Lord has done. Where my wrestlers at? Look what the Lord has done. Say, He healed my body. He touched my mind. He picked me up. Just in time. I'm gonna praise. I'm a Holy Ghost.
believer. Jesus is just the same. Turn me up a little bit in the Let mic, please. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Hey. Oh, well, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. Hey. Took back what he stole from Someone me. Someone say Jesus. Took back what he stole from hey. me. Hey, well, I went to the enemy's camp. Put him in his place. He's under my feet. He's under your feet. He's under my feet. He's under your feet. He's under my feet. He's under your feet. Say, Satan is under my feet. Well, well, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. Yes, I took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole. And I took back what he stole from me. He's under my feet. He's under your feet. He's under my feet. He's under your feet. Let's go. He's under my feet. He's under your feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under your 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 feet. He's you got the victory this morning. Okay, I want you to keep praising him until your neighbor gets the victory. How many of you got the victory this morning? Let me tell you something. Keep clapping. I love this song. He says, I went to the enemy camp and I took back. And how many know in order to take something, you got to use your hands? I've met some of the most famous boxers in the world. I met Deontay Wilder, the Charlo brothers. I met Johnny Tapia. I met Fernando Vargas. And when you shake their hand, let me tell you something about a fighter's hands. They got some strong hands. You can feel it when you shake their hand. They don't got these soft little hands. They got knuckles that are about that big that protrude out of their hand because they spent their entire life fighting. But let me tell you something about your hands. You don't have weak hands. You have a fighter's hand. You got Holy Ghost hands. You got holy hands. So what you need to do this morning, no matter what you're going through, I'm preaching this morning. You need to go over to the enemy's camp and you need to take back everything the devil tried to steal from you. Come on. Wear your hands. Let me see them. Let's go. Yeah, well, I went to the enemy. Let me see those hands. Here I took back what he stole from me. Here I took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole from me. Well, I went to the enemy. Here I took back what he stole from me. He's under my feet. He's under your feet. He's under my feet. He's under your feet. He's under my feet. He's under your feet. Satan is under my feet. Now come on and make the devil jealous. You are the real worshipers. You are the real praiser. Come on and shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph in this place. What's his name? What's his name? Who do you love? Who's in the house? Oh, come on and give Jesus the biggest praise you can. Come on, give me some energy, man. I feel. Come on, Ben, help me out. Hey. Hey. 